So I've left the best till last. This is the last of my PDP computers and the pride of the fleet. It's a PDP 8F, which is a couple of years newer than the PDP 8E. The, the main differences, I believe, are that this uses LEDs instead of lamps that the 8E uses, and it has a switching power supply rather than a linear one. Otherwise, the, the internals, the circuit boards are compatible with both of them. There's also a PDP-8M, which is essentially the same. It's just an OEM version, so it might have different labelling, but from here back it's identical. So, yeah, there it is. It's got, unlike some PDPs, it has a couple of displays. You've got a memory address display there, plus a data display. And you can select what is displayed in the data area. And it's got toggle switches. like the PDP-1105 had. And unlike the PDP-1105, I've still got the key, which is nice. Now, I have turned this thing on when I first got it, so and it, I was able to put in a little program that looped. So yeah, it works. Um, I'm tempted to just plug it in and turn it on now, but it's been a few years since it was turned on, so I really should check out the power supply before I do that. So I won't be turning it on in this video, maybe later on, we'll have a go. So let's have a look at the back of it. A bit loose. Not sure what that is, probably, well, no, I won't guess. Um, I don't know much about them at this, at this stage. Made in Puerto Rico by the look of it. And it's dusty. Let's have a look, closer look at the list of boards. Unlike the pdp 8A that I just looked at, which only had three circuit boards in it, this one's got quite a few, I think something like 12. Uh, the 8A had four other boards that I found later, so that makes seven, but this one's got 12. We'll verify that when we open it up, uh, it, which is easily done. Just three half-turn quick-release screws, and the lid slides back. So we'll have, have a look in the top. Now it's been sitting with the top off for some time, and collect a lot of dust so it needs a good vacuum but uh, we can see it's got two fans here power supply at the back and a lot of boards and this board here is the front panel and then all the others which we'll go through part of the reason for doing this video is just to document what's where before i move anything so we'll just do a quick scan over the top of it So we can uh, start pulling them out. And once again, I'm mostly doing this to find out what power supply connectors are involved so I can fit a dummy load for testing the power supply. I was just looking at a picture on the web and it seems that this power supply is very similar to the one inside the PDP-1105. Okay, I'll start pulling out boards. There's all the boards out. They Mostly agreed with what was written on the back of the unit, though there was one board that was different to what's written there, and there's one extra board, which I'll go through later. So uh, there's one more board, which is the front panel board, and um, I won't bother taking off the front panel. I'm not sure which part number is. It's not written on the handles, but yeah, pretty dirty and dusty in there, so I'll give that a vacuum. And then have a look at the power supply. I thought, bugger it, I'll take the front panel off. It's just four screws and an Allen key to get this knob off. And it's pretty dusty back there, so it can do with a clean as well. This just slides out of the frame. You can see the two rows of LEDs there. They're all present except these three. Only the middle one's fitted. And it looks like there's traces on the PCB for the two outside LEDs, so it might be interesting to look into that and see what those LEDs might indicate. Well, the middle one's the run light, and there's, well, there's 
nowhere for it to shine for the other two to shine through anyway so I guess it's not really worth looking at after all all right so I'm gonna give that a clean now it looks like there's only a couple of screws more to take this bracket off the frame and then the board would come out but I won't bother with that it might be good I might break some leads or it might be might be a bit too fragile. I've been able to get out all of it and clean the dust off, so that will do. I might give this a bit of a wash in soapy water. Maybe replace that masking tape. And then we'll have a look at the boards or the power supply. I'll look at the boards, then the power supply. Now turning to the boards, uh, this is what I found inside the cabinet. Uh, from slot 1 through to slot 20. Slot 1's at the front. And this is the back of the power supply sits behind here. And there's slot one has always got the front panel plugged into it, of course. And in the last slot, you always have this bus terminator board. Where's that gone? Here it is. The M8320, the bus loads board, which is terminators. Not sure what all the diodes do. Terminators on the PDP 11s were just pairs of resistors from plus 5 volts to ground with the middle going to the signal but this one works a bit differently obviously uh, but I believe it holds each line at about 3.8 volts and then open collector drivers pull them down as required now between these two so that, that's the front panel and the bus loads and in between we have three zones if you like the first zone is the CPU zone, hard up against the front panel. And then hard up against the bus loads, we have the memory zone. And in between, we have the I.O. zone. I.O. zone, layer. So we'll look at the CPU zone first. Start off with the M8330, the timing generator. All seems to be pretty normal. 7400 series type stuff it's got a, a rock with the main uh, clock of the system but yeah, pretty straightforward looking next comes well would come if I had it the extended arithmetic element that's the, the two empty slots that were in there now the, the EAE adds uh, multiply and divide instructions some double precision instructions and some other miscellaneous instructions to support the use of the divide and double precision. And as you might imagine, when you're adding extra instructions to the CPU, you'd need a fairly intimate connection to the CPU to implement them. So that's why it's sitting right in the middle of the CPU and it uses top blocks to connect to the timing generator and to the next board the M8310 which is the which is the CPU register control again just a lot of 7400 stuff next is the M8300 CPU major registers again mostly logic and finally the M8370 Extended memory and timeshare control. Very shiny too. Uh, I don't really know what that does. But again, just looks like straightforward logic. So that's the CPU section. Then going down to the back where the memory is. The last one is a G233C XY drivers. And being drivers you'd expect a bit of uh, power and analog circuitry on there so that's what that looks like then we have the actual core memory plane with a nice protective cover over all those very fine wires that you can see in there and I guess these are I don't know sense amplifiers maybe not sure and the last part of the memory is the G111 sense inhibit. Now that's very analog looking and uh, 
underneath the strip is a, a row of pulse transformers. Apparently on earlier revisions they were prone to being broken off as the board was manhandled and this gives it a bit more support. So that's the memory. Well almost. This is sort of part of it too. The M849, it's just a RFI shield, a ground plane connecting to all the ground pins on the back on the omnibus to keep EMI out of the memory or prevent the memory radiating it, not sure which. So that's the memory and CPU sections. And I mentioned that there was one board had changed and there was an extra board added. Turns out it was just one board moved and an extra board added. This M8650 was in slot 15, moved up to slot 8. That's this guy. Let's uh, say RS232 and 20 milliamp current interface, a crystal for uh, generating board rate signals, and that's what this cable used to connect to on the back panel. That plugged in there, and this went out the back. So that's your serial I.O. And the last board, the one that was added, is an M8326 interprocessor buffer, which allows two PDP 80s to communicate with each other. And they have two 40 pin cables, an input and an output, so they would cross over. The input on one goes to the output on the other, and vice versa. It's a fairly simple protocol, I believe, and this, this can be used for more general purpose parallel I.O. It doesn't have to be just for another, to talk to another PDP-8E. Uh, I have no idea what it was doing in this machine, but uh, yeah, I've got one. So I think that covers all the boards. Time to have a look at the power supply. I'm still trying to work out how to get the power supply out. There was this cover with four half turn quick release screws that only exposes the inside. Um, and there's a bit more dust to vacuum in there. And there's another fan. So no wonder this thing, I remember it being quite noisy. So this has got three fans in it. All the other PDPs only have two. Uh, anyway, so I know how to, from the last computer I know, if I undo some screws on this, I can get that out and maybe get to some connectors. But I'm trying to get the whole box out. I haven't worked out how to do that yet. Maybe there's some screws on the bottom. Yeah, four screws there. So take them out and see what happens. Two of the screws on the bottom hold down the back lines. So I'll leave them. The other two seem to hold this. And there's a couple of nuts on there that I've taken off. And that looks like I'm, I'm close. So I can see if I can wiggle it out. Well, this is a lot harder to get out than the <laughs> regulator in the PDP-8A. That was just three half turns, it was three screws. There's, I couldn't get that box out. I think you'd probably have to pull the whole damn frame apart to do, do that. I don't want to go that far, but I could undo six screws holding this board down and get this connector that goes to the back plane off and then this one here, which comes from the transformer, and then this thermal switch plugs up into the back of this. So it comes free. And unfortunately there's all this really deteriorated foam and it's um, in the back of the box as well, so I have to break all that off and vacuum it away. And uh, yeah, so at least I can get to this power supply which, and um, check out the capacitors. Okay, now that I've got that regulator out, I've, I know I don't have to take those two nuts off there or the four screws at the bottom. So the only thing that you need to do to get the regulator out is take off this cover from the back and then there's six screws that hold this in and you can pull it out and unplug three things and you've got it. So I have to come up with some sort of a 
foam to put on the inside of that again just to just to stop this banging against it probably not that important but I've also put the front panel back on so uh, all I have to do to make this as it was is to put that regulator back in and put the boards back in but uh, first I've got to check out those capacitors on the power supply and then test test the power supply even if I don't have to replace the caps and that's about it for this video I think that was the PDP 8F hope you enjoyed I know my videos can sometimes be too long and no one watches them to the end where I say please like and subscribe but if you got this far please like and subscribe catch you later